Hello everyone. So, so today I am going to discuss about the posture assessment. So it's nothing but our body alignment, how the ideal posture should be. In this assessment, what is uh, posture, what are the different types of the posture, what are the abnormalities of the posture. If any uh, patient comes with a postural abnormality, how to assess the posture in the sitting position, in the standing position, in lying positions, where they're having the complications, we have to assess. So for this assessment, we have to uh, go through like a systematic approach. So here I'm going to discuss about the different types of the posture, what is the ideal posture. So these things are going to discuss in this topic. So coming to the, what is posture actually? So if you see the like in the medical terminology, we called as posture and also we also called as the position, nothing but our body alignment during the all the activities time and also resting times, how it should be. So if you see the definition, definition is, is a posture is defined as the attitude assumed by the body, either with the support during the course of the muscular activity or as a result of the coordinated actions performed by the group of the muscles working to maintain the stability. So this is going to be how the group of the muscles during the working activities, how it's going to be support and also how during the activities, how is going to be coordinated to maintain the stability. So that is called as the posture. So if you see this posture, this posture is divided into the, the two types of the posture. So first one is called as the inactive posture and also active posture. So again, this posture is going to divide into active posture is going to divide into static posture and also dynamic posture. So we can we are going to discuss about the what is inactive posture and also what is active posture. So coming to the inactive posture means in the resting time. So how our, our body is going to be like a, a taking rest in the abnormal and also is in these activities. So the attitude adapted for the resting or sleeping. So how our uh, attitude, our behavior is going to be adapted to for the sleeping purpose or resting purpose. So this posture is called as inactive posture. All the essential muscular activity reduces to minimum here. So all the activities are going to be reduced. The muscular activity is going to be reduced because of the resting conditions or because maybe this uh, while we are resting or maybe watching TV or maybe playing with uh, anything, how the posture uh, is going to be accommodated or adapted to uh, resting period. So that is called as the inactive. So it's uh, used for the, the training general relaxation. So how they are going to for the main purpose is relaxation purpose. So next coming to the active posture is divided into the two types of posture. So the static posture and also dynamic posture. So what is static posture? Static posture means a static, like a constant posture. Dynamic meaning posture means the posture in the movement pattern. So the static posture, the pattern of the posture is constant. Body and its segments are aligned and also maintained in certain positions. So either standing posture or kneeling or sitting posture. And this is a standing, is a like a static posture, less a constant posture. Coming to the dynamic postures, so these are going to be the pattern of the posture is constantly modified. So maybe the dynamic posture means from walk, like the walking, running, jumping, throwing, and lifting, or maybe any playing activities, or maybe sit to stand activities, or and also any exercise. So such as any like a running and throwing and lifting activities also. How the posture is going to be altered during the activities. So this is very, very important while assessing the sports persons. So sometimes we have to assess the, the sports performance. So in those conditions also we have to check. So where the muscles are is hyperactive or maybe weak. So where they're having the problems. So if you do this assessment, we can diagnose the what problems they are facing during the movement time. So that is the important here. So here the body and its segments are going to be moving. They uh, form an efficient base for the movement. So for the base, it should be efficient. If they're having any lack of base of support or if any base of support is reduced, so they may chance to get the fall down. They may chance to get the injuries. So, so these are the two types of the posture. First one is the inactive posture. Second one is the active posture. This active posture again divided into static posture and dynamic posture. So coming to the assessment of the uh, posture, how we are going to do the assessment uh, of uh, posture. 
So this assessment will be depends upon the some uh, techniques, the special systematic techniques. So we have to use the HIPS techniques. So HIPS techniques means H for the history, I for the inspection, uh, that is observation, and also we can do the P for palpation, S for the special test, also is a functional test. So we have to check, so where they having the problem. So we have to take the history and also inspection. So we have to take the history. Why we have to take the history? If you take the history, we can get the so much of information where they are getting the problem. And also from the history, we can predict something, the causative factor. And also we have to, in the history, what we are going to check, we'll discuss. So these are the hips like a patterns, history, inspection and palpation and also special test. So these methods we have to follow. So in the history, what we have to take the from history. So if the person facing with any partial problem, so because of the posture, if they are complaining any pain or any deformity or any difficulty functional activities, so we have to uh, take complete full history from the persons. So here we have to take the, was there any history of the injury? So if any patients comes with the partial abnormalities, so we have to ask the main question is, is there any history of injury, history of the direct injury or indirect injury, any history of the motor vehicle accident? So we have to, and also we have to take the mechanism of injury. If anybody get the met with an accident, how it happened, that means in which direction, is it because of the road traffic accident or because of the any twisting or any playing activity or any throwing activity, how they got the injury? <clears throat> Or maybe because of the any continuous sitting posture or maybe their uh, work environment. So we have to know why they have got the, this partial abnormality. And also, is there is history of the had the patient experienced any back injury previously? If so, what is the cause of the pain? Cause of the pain? So we have to know sometimes because of the back injury also, it may give the abnormality, it may alter the posture. Because of the back is going to be maintain our posture in the erect posture. If any problem in the back, our spinal vertebral column is going to be alter the like a function, so it may give the deformities. So in those conditions, they may chance to get the postural abnormalities. And also in the history, is there any a posture that relieves pain or increases symptoms? Are any uh, aggravating factors and also deteriorating factors and that reasons for example if anybody having like a in the case of sitting posture some people may chance to get the severe pain but it uh, it is going to be in case of uh, if it is the standing posture they may relieve the pain so in those conditions we have to know which positions are getting relief and also which positions are getting aggravating the pain symptoms does the family have any history of the back or any special problems? So, if such as the any congenital abnormalities. If you see, for example, some congenital abnormalities are because of congenital dislocation of the hip or CTEV, congenital talipus equinovirus or congenital like a uh, scoliosis. Like a, the spine is going to bend towards one side. The spine is going, we are going to discuss in the next later slides. Just what are the congenital abnormalities? So because of these congenital abnormalities, their pattern of the walking pattern is going to be altered. So that is the reason we have to ask any history of the congenital abnormalities in the family. And also the next history. So we have to take any any previous illness or surgery. So because of some surgeries also, because of the surge after post-surgical uh, period treatment plan so they may chance to get the restriction of the movement may chance to get the deformities so that is the reason so we have to know any history of the surgery or any complete bed rest after the any injury uh, in injury and also any history of other conditions like a connective tissue disorders if anybody having a connective tissue disorders also may chance to get the deformities and also may chance to get the partial abnormalities Coming to the next one, does the footwear makes any difference to the patient to posture or symptoms? So sometimes because of the postural abnormality, they may chance to get the pain in the, their back region, neck region or any part. If the which one is going to be like a, affected, so those areas are going to be prone to get the pain. So sometimes, for example, in case of like a uh, plantar fasciitis or maybe in case of like a heel pain. So because of the abnormal posture or because of any uh, like a plantar fasciitis, but if they use the proper footwear, so sometimes we are going to prevent the friction in the foot and also in the heel region, so we can prevent the pain. So we have to check is there any footwears are going to be change the 
the pain pattern or the severity of the pain and also because of the some if the uh, pelvic in uh, like a uh, tilt or pe abnormal pelvic uh, displacement so displacement of the pelvis also may chance to give the uh, deformities and also may chance to get the uh, abnormality <coughs> so these things are going to give the uh, the, during the assessment, we have to th take these uh, uh, points to consider to check the assessment clearly. And also, age of the patient. So, the age of the patient is going to be degenerative changes. Is there any degenerative changes? Any osteoarthritis, any spinal degenerative conditions? Anywhere in the degeneration may chance to get the complications. And also, in child, if the growth spurt, when it begins. So, it's many changes in the growth, any abnormality growth. So, we have to check. And also, we have to rule out the where exactly having the cause to factor. For the females, when the when the uh, the menarche begins, and also any back pain during the menses. So menarche means when they are going to start the menstrual cycle. So and also, is there any uh, like a any time, any uh, monthly period back pain, that means uh, during the period, uh, menstrual cycle, are they having any back pain? Or is there any deformity present that is a progressive or stationary? If any deformity is there, is it progressing or is it constant? Any neurological symptom? So if any, along with the, these the deformities, are they having any numbness, tingling sensation, loss of sensation and loss of muscle functions? So we have to rule out during the assessment and the, we have to take the complete history and the nature and extent and type of the and type and duration of the pain so if they get the pain how they are getting the pain so that means is it the what type of the pain and what extent from where to where they are getting the pain and also where exactly they having the pain that's a is it burning pain or shock uh, like a shooting pain or stabbing pain nagging pain so many different types of the pains and also duration also, is it a short duration or long duration or maybe intermittent? That means some of the pain may chance, one time they may, uh, uh, that means uh, only some particular time, maybe in the morning or maybe only uh, 15 to 20 minutes or maybe one hour. Sometimes it's going to be in the morning and also in the evening or maybe it's going to be, is a, is a intermittent, sometimes pain, sometimes no pain. So we have to check the where exactly having the problem. And also in children, is there in difficulty in the fitting the clothes? So especially in case of scoliosis, the spine bending to one side, lateral bending of the spine, in the scoliosis. So unable to wear the dresses. So these are also the, some of the history like a points we have to take during the assessment. And also any difficulty in the breathing. So especially in the scoliosis and also in case of the kyphosis. So, because of the compression of the lungs, so they may chance to get the breathing difficulty. If it bend to one side, because of bending one side, these lungs are going to be compressed to one side, they may chance to get the difficulty in breathing. Or in the kyphosis, the posture and also forward posture and also posterior, like a uh, posterior curvature, so the back side, the hump may chance to get. In those conditions also, lungs are going to be compressed. So, so that's why we have to check is there any breathing difficulty or not and also dominant height so which side is the dominant uh, hand so because of the dominant also hand also they are going to use the hand to only the dominant side so maybe that side they may lean and also maybe uh, other sides are going to be uh, less flexibility any previous treatments and also what was successful so for this uh, deformities or for these problems so we have to take any history or uh, uh, did they take any like a treatment any painkillers or any physiotherapy treatment or any chiropractic treatment or any manipulations so any medical management so we have to take any surgical management so we have to know the what treatment we are there with the, with the what treatment they are getting relief the uh, problem or maybe pain symptoms and also next one is driving, sitting and sleeping postures. So during the how the driving uh, and also sitting and also sleeping postures. And also level and also intensity of exercise also we have to check. So with these postural abnormalities or maybe if the normal person how they can do their postural like uh, their activities. So we have to check where exactly uh, that means how much intensity they are practicing and also what level is the mild or moderate or severe. So what type of exercise they are doing regularly. Is there any restriction of the movement because of the abnormalities we have to rule out.
So that is all about the history in the history, all the points we have to take. And also after the history, then we can go to, and that is, there is the, our observation. So we have, until now, we have got the information from the patient, the person who are coming for the, like a treatment plan. So then we have to, our role is here more. So this is observations. So our observations, we have to const uh, constantly observe the, like a, where they're having the problem. So in the observations, we have to considerations to take. So the area being used to is private and also comfortable. So where we are going to observe, so we have to give the privacy and also comfortness to the person. And also the patient's preparedness. So we have to pre prepare the patients. Do not inform patient you are assessing the posture. So that means we are going to check everything what they are having the problem. So not only posture, we are have to identify what they having the complications. Here we have to use the systematic approach. Start at the feet and work superiorly or vice versa. So that means if you start from the bottom, from the distal to proximal, either proximal to distal. We have to start from the toe to head or head to toe. So but we have to observe clearly and also identify the abnormality in the posture. Compare bilaterally for symmetry. So if we have to compare the so on right side as well as the left side, both we have to compare. And also your eyes should be level up the recognition you are observing. So that means we have to try to find out the, the abnormalities. So we have to recognize where exactly having the deformities and abnormal in the posture. Not any use of the assistive devices. So we have to, if the patient comes to a clinic and also hospital, so our role is, so how the patient comes to the clinic. Is, is he came independently or dependently or maybe is he came with uh, any walker or any with the cane or any stick or in the wheelchair on the stretcher. So how the patient comes to the clinic. So we have to uh, rule out. And also one thing is he came with any assistive devices. Assistive devices means any crutch, any stick or any wheelchair or any, any what are any help from the caregivers. So we have to check. And also habitual relaxed posture must be examined. So some people are going to be habitual relaxation positions. Some people are in the sitting also, they are going to sit in the kind of like a, in the wrong direction. They are not maintaining the proper ergonomics also. So these are the some uh, like a, uh, assessment plan during the observation. So then we have to check the uh, asymmetry during the standing time and sitting and lying. So in the lying, we have to check in the supine lying position and prone lying position. So if you see the standing pose and sitting pose, what is the asymmetry? What is the abnormality towards the right side and left side? If you see the standing, so how is standing? Is it the weight shifting and weight bearing in the both legs are equal? How the shoulder level, how the ear lobule level, how the like a pelvis level, is it the, is the equal or, or maybe one side tilted or one side is hiking? So we have to check. And also any presence of the muscle wasting. So we have to check the any muscle wasting, any muscle uh, thinness. So because of the weakness or because of the nutritional deficiency also, uh, may chance to get the muscle becomes thin. Or any soft tissue, bony swelling and also enlargement. So any swelling is there or any soft tissue injuries or any bone swellings or any enlargements are there. So, so we have to rule out and else we have to find out. So in case of injury, so may chance to get the scar formation like in open wound or any surgical procedures. So they may chance to get the scar. So we have to found the where exactly having the scar. Is it right side or left side? Because of the scar, is there any contracture or any tightness in the muscle or in the skin? So we have to find any changes in the skin. So we have to find in the an observation. And also in the observations, we have to use the plumb line so this is going to be so this is the best option that is the best method to observe the abnormality in the posture that is the plumb line test so these things we have to use in the lateral plumb line that is the sagittal plane movement anterior side and also posterior so these three views we have to check with the plumb lines i'm going to show you how to do the plumb line so what we have to observe it during the plumb line test so before that one, so we have to confirm it. So what type of the body they have. So first having, so in the last class also, we already discussed the types of the body types. What is ectomorph, what is endomorph, what is mesomorph. So ectomorph, if you see here, the person is going to be the very thin and also is a long body posture. 
So and also miso marth is going to be the medium, so it's not like a fat and also it's not more fat and also and also not lean. So it's a medium sized body and also endomorph is going to be thin body structures. So it's a little bit they may transmit the fat easily. So why we have to know? So because of these things, so we have to. So the person, so who's so which people may chance to get the deformities? So because of the muscle weakness, because of the body type, so we can rule out. So here we are going to, uh, like a, uh, if we know the, the body types, we can assess very easily where they're having the problems. So in the standing posture, so we have to check the plumb line test. So this plumb line is nothing but we have to use the one line. So if you have the plumb line with the, like a, the weight, uh, like a plumb and also with a thread, so we can use it. So here we can see uh, with the thread, we are going to measure the, the one weight is going to attach to the this thread. So if, if we put this one, so how this uh, line is distributing or uh, dissecting our body, so we can understand where exactly having the problem. So if we give this plumb lines, so we can find where our ear posture, where our, our body posture, is it the front to the plumb line or back to the plumb line, so we can easily understand. If you know the ideal posture, so then only we can know the what is the abnormal posture. So I'm going to explain what are the ideal postures, how we are going to check here. So and also this one is the plumb line test in the lateral view. So this plumb line is placed just in front of the lateral malleolus or through the greater trochanters. So here is we have to place here. So if you place the plumb lines, so this in the lateral view. So, so it's supposed to be during the plumb line test, if you hold the plumb line, so this line should cross the so exactly if you see here, so it crossed the ear lobes and also head of the humerus and body of the vertebral bodies, greater trochanter, anterior to the center of the knee joint and also lateral malleus. It should cross all these things. If any abnormalities, for example, if this lines moves so away from the these parts, for example, should uh, uh, cross the this uh, like a ear lobules and also here is going to be slightly behind the like a coronal sutures. So these are going to coronal suture. So cross the ear lobules and also greater like in the head of the humerus and also it should go to the, the bodies of the lumbar vertebra and next one is going to be the, the greater trochanter in the femur and it should cross. So for example, if the line moves forward, if the line moves here, so from the cheeks or maybe in between the jaw, so it indicates the the person is the forward like a slouching posture or maybe it's because of the rounded shoulder or maybe uh, so it's because of the abnormal posture or for example if the line is crossing behind the ear behind the ear so it may indicating the is extension posture so depends upon the plumb line we can clearly understand so where they having the problem so if it is not this is the ideal posture ideal posture should be the plumb line should cross the and also ear external artery meatus and also next one is the odontoid process body of cervical vertebras head of the humerus so this should go this way if any changes if the line comes to the uh, in front of the shoulder so who already having like a rounded shoulder or forward bending posture so they may chance to get or for example if it is moves this line at the knee joint if it moves forward so it indicates that they're having the problem in the forward posture in the hip and also they're having the tightness in the hamstring muscles or maybe because of the tightness of the hamstring and also gluteus muscle. So that's why we have to know where exactly they're having the tightness and also weakness and having the problem. So this is in the lateral view we have to check in the with the plumb line test. So next one is the anterior view. So how we are going to check the anterior view plumb line. The patient should be straight standing and also should be equal weight bearing on the legs. So if the line shift this uh, like a plumb line, okay, here I will show the image, you can understand. So it should be, if we put the plumb line, it should cross the midline of the nose and also sternum and umbilicus and also pubic symphysis. It should grow like it cross all these parts and also should comes to the center of the feet. So it should be at least 10 to 15 degrees from the, so is going to be the abduction of the each foot. So it should be over the, and also this line should go uh, parallelly in between the 
the feet. So both feet should be in between, exactly should be. It should not close to the left leg and it should not close to the right leg. So then this is the ideal plumb line test. If any problems or maybe any uh, the changes or the line moves to right side or maybe left side, so we can understand where exactly having the, the partial abnormalities. So and also plumb line test in the posterior. So we have to put in the posterior also we have to check. So the posterior how the line should be intersect. So that means here also it should go to the backside occipital protuberance and also vertebral columns, spinal board and vertebral bodies and also in the uh, like a uh, sacrum and also in between cross between the in between equally distributed in between the both feet. So if any alteration here if it any slight in case of scoliosis or in case of head tilt or rotation conditions this line is going to be disturbed it's not, it's not going to be straight. So we can easily found out is there any rotational problem in the neck or maybe the shoulder depression or hiking or maybe shoulder drooping or maybe bend towards one side are there scoliosis or kyphosis or any spinal vertebral problem or any chest wall problem. So we can easily understand during the like the anterior plumb line test and also posterior plumb line test. So what are the changes we are going to observe in the all this one. Observation document and also documentation plumb line measurements. So in the lateral view and also we have to check the head and neck. So in which conditions they are going to may alter. So the plumb line falls through the ear lobes to the acromion process from ear lobule to exactly to the acromion process. It should be is a normal ideal one. If it is comes forward here or if the line comes forward here, so it may alter the, the posture. So is going to be so when they are going to get the abnormalities. So in these conditions, they may chance to get the forward head. Forward head hits if it is moves like this one, it may alter the line. And also flat under lordotic cervical curve. So in case of normally having the cervical is going to having the curvature here. So but in case of like a, a degenerative changes, this curve may be is going to loss. You can see here the curve. This is lordotic curve. If it is straight, so the line is going to be straight. Is the cross to the backside. If it's straight, it comes here. This moves. This line moves backside. So and also excessive lordotic curve, excessive lordotic curve in the lumbar region, if it's excessive lordotic curve, so what happened? So this line is going to be moved to the posterior side. So those things we are going to observe during the lateral examination. It's a lateral plumb line test. So coming to the, the shoulders, how it will be. So the plumb lines, it falls through the acromion process. So it should cross the acromion process. In case of if any rounded shoulder or lumbar lordosis at the, because of the shoulder, so this line is going to be forward or either maybe lordosis, this line is going to the back side, that's the posterior side. So these are the abnormalities. So if you know the ideal postures, so we can know the abnormality. So and also we have to what in which conditions it may alter. So forward rounded shoulder or lumbar lordosis. If it lumbar lordosis, this line is going to the posterior side. In the forward shoulder, this line is going to move forward. So that, that is the difference of the, uh, the faulty postures. In the lateral view and also this plumb line is going to bisect the chest systematically and also symmetrically. So if it is reached, so we can understand. So what are the curvatures in the spine? So if you see in the, in the here in the neck regions, normally we have the lordotic curve. In the, the thoracic region, we can get the kyphotic curve. Again, it's going to the lordotic curve. In the sacrum is going to the kyphotic curve. So if any exaggerated of these curves, so it, or maybe loss of these curves may chance to give the postural abnormality. It should not be exaggerated. It should not be the diminished. So it's equally like a normal curvatures. So in conditions, some especially some other like in the abnormal conditions such as the kyphosis. Kyphosis means the excessive like a extra curvature in the thoracic region. The angle is going to be increased in the thoracic curvature. Here, this is if you see the cur normal curvature. If it is increased the curvature, if the kyphosis is normal curvature, if the more than uh, like a normal curvature in the thoracic level, if they get the gibbous formation, gibbous means like a uh, rounded curvature in the thoracic in the back region, so that is called as the kyphosis. Or in case of the like a pectus exavatum, so the funnel chest. If the funnel chest means the chest is going to be depressed, sternum is going to be depressed or in case of like a chest wall deformities or in case of pectus exavatum or barrel chest. These, so these are deformities like a chest wall deformities or pigeon chest. The chest wall sternum is going to be rounded curvature. 
so it may chance to get the abnormality in the spine and may give the abnormal posture and also the plumb lines in the lumbar vertebra is going to the falls between the uh, abdomen and also the back slightly anterior to the sacroiliac joint so he is going to here the plumb lines in the lateral view but is uh, who are having some complications such as the lordosis sway back or flat back is going to be altered so here the back is going to be lordosis means the exaggerated curvature in the so here here if it is increasing the curvature in the lumbar region is called as lordosis or sway back means going to be the back is going to be okay i'll show you the image here you can clearly understand okay so if you see here so here is going to be the supposed to be you see here the sway back posture is going to be this is the ideal posture so it should be cross the external auditory meatus that is the ear lobule the shoulder and also it's a greater trochanter in the knee and lateral malleus but in the sway back posture see here the greater trochanter is not crossing the greater trochanter and also it's not properly crossing the the shoulder so here is going to be this line is close to the kyphosis so totally the line of gravity is changed and also military neck back so that means here supposed to be it reach to the this neck should be is a get the angle here that is the lordotic curve but it's move forward so it's a straight the line is straight flat back also the black, there is a there is no lordosis the build the, the back becomes straight and also kyphotic posture the kyphotic posture means the thoracic is going to get the gibbous formations and also forward head postures so here the forward is going to rounded shoulder and also head is going to be forward so these are all the common like a partial abnormalities so it may alter the the line of gravity and also distribution of the base of support is going to be altered so if we ident if we understand these things so we can clearly assess the uh, assess the posture and also we can detect where they having the problem so in these conditions we are going to found the abnormality in the lumbar vertebra so and also ankles also so the ankle the plumb lines slightly anterior to the lateral malleus if you see here this is a lateral malleus it should go to the anterior to the lateral malleus so and also if anybody having any problem in case of rounded shoulder so and as a forward posture to like in the uh, like in parkinson's gait like a forward stoop posture this may alter if the forward stoop posture this plumb line is going to come forward here so if we put the line so the line is going to be the more than like a 10 cm away from the lateral malleus or 10 cm forward to the lateral malleus so these things we have to identify or maybe who are having like a hyperlordosis is also going to be alter the this line is a posterior to the lateral malleus and so posteriorly so we have to check the what we have to check so posteriorly the midline bisects to the external occipital protuberance that is the back of the head and also it should goes to the the head equally usually position and also it remains in the so it in the center in the like a, the vertebral column and dissecting the sacrum and also in between going to the slightly the feet should be between the two feet so if it is any abnormality so it may chance to get the like a, uh, like a, it is going to be altered so in the head and neck regions so what they are going to get the faulty postures the head may tilt if anybody having tightness of the side flexors the head is going to tilt one side or maybe who having the sternocleidus uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle tightness so is going to be rotational some are may chance to get the rotational so what happened the head posture is going to be altered and also is adducted scapula so that means some scapula also going to be adducted so it alter the posture so we can easily understand where exactly having the problem or is abducted scapula so some people are going to the, uh, the forward movement of the shoulder so it is going to be abducted and also adduction and also winging of scapula so and also we can find the winging of scapula so this going to be gives the uh, Okay, we can easily find out. You can see here the winging of scapula. Here, there is may chance to get the the scapula is going to be prominent because of the weakness of the serratus anterior muscle. So these are the some abnormalities we can found while assessing the posterior plumb line test in the neck and head and neck region. And also trunk regions. 
So the plumb line dissect the spinous process of the thoracic and lumbar vertebra. So it should go between the spinous process. So most commonly in case of scoliosis, so they may chance to get the lean towards one side. It won't, uh, it won't uh, like a cross the bisect the spinous process of the lumbar and thoracic region. So sc sc scoliosis is nothing but lateral deviation of the spine. So especially you can see here the slide uh, is going to the spinal vertebral column is going to be altered. So they can find this type of problems, maybe is uh, like congenitally who have from by birth onwards, or maybe acquired scoliosis also we can find who have these conditions. So they may chance to get the uneven shoulder. The spine is going to get the curve and also uneven hips. So these are the classical features of the scoliosis we can find who having the like a abnormality in the posture. And next one is the pelvis and also hip. So because of the we can found in the pelvis also uh, the problems. So the line bisect the gluteal cleft and also posterior superior iliac spine. So it should go to the posterior iliac spine and also it's reached to the is going down. So it's a iliac crest, gluteal folds and greater trochanters are the equal position, all are in the level. So if any tilting, so upwards and downwards, so maybe lateral pelvic tilts, pelvic rotation or abducted hip. So in case of the like scoliosis also may chance to get this type of complications or maybe localize if any pelvic tilting or one muscle like a pelvic hiking to one side, other side is going to be dropped. You can see here, so if you see here, so what happened? This pelvic is hiking this side, right, left side is hiking, right side is dropping. So this also may alter the posture. So these complications, so this type of signs we can clearly observe who have the problems with the postural abnormality. So this can found in the uh, in the posterior directions. And also in the knee also we can find, so in the knee especially, this line is, is lies uh, equidistance between the knees. Supposed to be if the plumb line goes, so it should be equally pass the distribution equally distributed to the in between the both knees but in case of like abnormalities of the posture are uh, these are the two types genu valgum and also genu varum so in the valgum conditions so what happened the knock knees may chance to get the knees are going to be close so it's not equally distributed so they are going to be can find it so how the the plumb line is distributing how it's crossing the knees so we have to check it in case of this uh, genu valgum and varus so it may alter the like a knee, uh, like a uh, knee posture. So it may give the abnormality. And also the foot uh, and also ankle and foot problems. So this line is a uh, equidistance from the the malleolus, especially is the middle malleolus. So and also if you check this one, it's, it should be in the equal. So if anybody having abnormalities, so in case of the plus planus, so that is a plus planus means the flat foot. So there is no arch, middle arch. Our pest cavus is going to be hyper curvature of the, the medial arch. So in these conditions, the posture may be altered. So in the anterior direction, in the anterior plumb line test, so here we have to check the any changes in the like a shoulder levels, if any like a dropping of the shoulder and clavicle and joint asymmetry. So here we have to check the if you see the anterior directions, how the shoulder levels is the equal or not, or sometimes is going because of the abnormality is a shoulder may drop or this shoulder may hike. So because of this muscle tightness or maybe is because of this muscle weakness may drop. So we have to check how is the shoulder level, how is the ear lobule levels. We have to check in the anterior view. So then also we have to check for the elbows. So here any abnormality in the elbow, here should be the, the common faults are the cubitus vulgus. So here the forearm divides laterally from the arm angle greater than the 15 degrees in the female and 10 degrees in the male. So here, if then walking, so it is going to the cubitus vulgus, like a carrying angle we have to check. The carrying angle, that's the reason because of the wider pelvis, the female the walking pattern is going to be slightly rotation of the, like a shoulder, this external rotation may chance to get because of the, uh, ex, like a pelvis width as well as is going to be the elbow, the cubitus vulgus is going to be deviated to the lateral side. So these are the elbows are going to be hyperextension, displaced placements of the trochlea in relation, relation to the capitulum of the humerus. And also stretched ulnar collateral ligaments and cubitus virus. So is maybe if it is the elbow comes to the inside, so that means the angle, if for example here is going to the like a inverse is called as the cubitus varus, valgus, so sorry, cubitus varus. So if it is goes to the, if the angle is more here, so this is the cubitus valgus, valgus and also varus. 
and also next one is the anterior direction we are going to have to check for the hip uh, hip uh, like a uh, posture so this guy the plumb line common faults are mainly the lateral rotation and also medial rotation some people because of the abnormality the leg may goes to the lateral side some people because of the happy shell standing so it may alter the posture also so sometimes the medial rotation and also lateral rotation so in this condition the plumb line it may won't be in the it may won't cross the exactly greater trochanter or in between the uh, pubic symphysis and also alter uh, changes in the knee also if, if anybody having the external tibial torsions so in these conditions also who have like a rotation of the tibia is a external internal rotation so this external rotation it may alter the, the posture it may give the like abnormality so and also ankle and foot so it may give the alex valgus and armato was also may chance to get so the big toe is going to get the facing the problem so here these are the complications commonly found so during the assessment of the anterior direction that is the anterior view and posterior view and lateral view and also we have to observe in the uh, sitting positions in the sitting position how should we sit how the like a uh, ergonomics how to follow and also should be straight and also 1990 pose in the hips and knees is the ideal posture if you see here so this is the ideal posture in the sitting the person should be the maintain the 1990 pose the hip should be 90 degrees knee should be 90 degrees and also the spine should uh, uh, spine should be straight but here if you see the faulty posture so is there is no 1990 degree positions and also this one should be straight so because of the rounded shoulder so because of the tightness of the pectoral muscles so they are leaning forward so this is the wrong like a so we have to assess where exactly having the problem so here we can check here so some faulty posture in the sittings so should not they are going to like in the sitting going relaxed position they are going to move the pelvis forward and also lean back side so this is the faulty posture should be straight so if you see here this is the, uh, the ideal posture the hips are 90 degrees knees are 90 degrees spine is straight positions so in the also if the, the with us back support so without back support also should be is everything same you have to follow the 1990 pose and also note for the knees whether it has it the same distance from the floor so it should be the same distance at the like in the sitting positions how what is the distance between the like a uh, uh, ground to the in between the right and left uh, leg knees and also next for the we have to check for the any distance from the floor the the left or right so is the is both are contact to the ground equally or not we have to check in the sitting so sometimes who are having the abnormality one leg is going to like a cross sitting or one leg is going to on the ground so it will be may chance to get the abnormality and also then we have to check for the lying positions supine lying position and prone lying position so supine lying positions we have to check any abnormality so if any uh, pectus a carniatum or exervatum so that is the chest wall abnormalities so this means the is also called as the uh, funnel test chest funnel is going to the uh, sternum is going inside these are the chest wall deformities are may chance to get the uh, because of the some disease progression or because of abnormal formation or development of the chest bone are may chance to get are in the pectus carniatum so it is a pigeon chest so this may be the, uh, uh, the sternum is going to become the forward projection and also is going to be zified process and lower sternum so this process this are chest also called as pigeon chest so we have to observe in the supine lying position or in the standing and also what we observe in the <clears throat> so and also we have to check in the supine lying position along with abdominals muscles are flabby or strong or any wasting of the angles or uh, waist angles so that means how the hip angles and also asis anterior superior iliac spine levels any extension of the lumbar spine so if the supine line positions we have to put the hand below the lumbar region how much of space is there how much so with the according to the space we can diagnose the muscle having tightness or weakness we can confirm it so we have to check the any extension in the lumbar regions so in the prone line positions what we are going to found we are going to found the the shoulder girdles here so how the shoulder girdles so is it going to contact and also how the neck positions and also head position and PSS that is a posterior superior iliac spine we are going to find and posterior thigh and also calf we are going to be observe any abnormality or not so these are we are going to check in the prone lying position and the next one is the the palpations so what we are going to do in the palpations so we have to palpate in the the standing positions 
So we have to check the ASIS, that is the anterior superior iliac spine. So we have to palpate in the standing. So here, this is the anterior superior iliac spine and also posterior superior iliac spine. If you see here, so these are the anterior superior iliac spine here. So and also back side, the posterior superior iliac spine, we have to found that on palpation. Where exactly is on the, like in the same equal distance or maybe altered. So both anterior superior iliac spines in the anterior side and posteriorly, we have to check the posterior superior iliac spine. Is it equal or maybe drop or maybe high? We have to check it. And also anteriorly, we have to check the patella, iliac crest, anterior superior iliac spine heights, lateral malleolus height, fibular height, head heights, and also shoulder heights. So these things we have to observe, we have to palpate, we have to feel it with our hand. Is it equal position or any alteration or maybe one anything up or down? In the posteriorly, we have to check for the posterior superior iliac spine and spinal alignment and scapular positions. Scapular positions, any winging of scapula or any adduction scapula, any abducted scapula, any rotation of the scapula. So these things we have to palpate with uh, our hand in the posteriorly. And also we have to do the, some functional testings. So these tests also will help to do where exactly they are having the problem. So if anybody is having some uh, back uh, problem or back injury related to disc problem, so we have to do some special test. So that is called a slump test. So in the slump test, the patient should uh, sit on the, the couch in the high sitting positions. First, we can ask them the patient should be relaxed. And also ask them to slump forward, ask them to bend forward. So if they are not any get any, if they're having any pain in the back region, so we can uh, it indicates uh, the problem in the, in the disc. So again, if we can go, uh, if no pain, so we can go to the further test. So ask them to do the unaffected leg straighten. So if no pain, if it is pain, we can confirm it. They're having the, some back injury, having some back problem. If no pain, only for forward bending, we can ask them the and the uninvolved, unaffected leg straightening. Still, if the pain is there or not checked, we have to check. And after that, we have to ask them to affected leg. So if it is affected leg, if they are having any pain or tingling or numbness, and also the any pain in the thigh and calf region also it indicates the sciatica. So sciatica problem also may use the they can stand partial abnormalities if it is progression uh, severely. And also we can check for the we can try for the both legs also straighten together. We can ask them to straight leg sitting. Both legs ask them to straight. We have to check for the, any signs and symptoms. So this test is rule out the if anybody having any disc problems. So this is the best test to rule out the any back problem. So that is the slump test. And also we have to check for the leg length discrepancy test. So if you see here, the normal is going to be the both hips are in the equal levels. If you see the anterior side, so this uh, anterior superior iliac spines are going to be equally and also posterior also if you see the posterior superior iliac spine should be equal. So it should be, we have to take the, the measurement from the, the greater like anterior superior iliac spine to the medial malleolus. And also we can check from the uh, we can check from the zipoid process to the middle malleolus. So if it is a normal person, so it's going to be the, both sides are going to be equal, right side as well left side. But in case of if anybody having problem, so in, we have to take the apparent leg length discrepancy. Apparent leg length discrepancy means, so first we have to take from the zipoid process to the middle malleolus. And also then we have to take from the, so this is apparent leg length discrepancy. So coming to the next one is the, the true leg only for particularly the only leg discrepancy. Some legs are going to be short or length. So how to assess? So these are going to be the only the checking with the leg length discrepancy test. So this one is we have to take from the A size to the middle malleolus. We have to check for the right side as well as left side. You can see here if any abnormality, so it may altered. So it, it, this is going to be lengthened or maybe it's going to be short. So depends upon the pelvic hiking. So one pelvis is going to be up, one pelvis is going to down. If any one pelvis is going up, one pelvis down, what happened? So this side leg is going to be short. This side leg is going to be length. So that is the reason. So we have to check the any leg length discrepancy is apparent leg length and also true limb length. So with this one, we can found the if any problem in the pelvis or if any abnormality in the spine or maybe any lateral deviation of the spine, we can easily found out and we can rule out the causal factor. And also other than these things, we have to do the special test that is Rombach's test. So we can Rombach's test if any balance problem. So we can ask them to ask the stand and the with eyes closing 
and also stra uh, straightening of the hands so it may having the shaking if they having any partial abnormality so if they may fall down if they having in coordination so there is no proper coordination if the balance problem also may chance to give the like a this they may chance to get the partial abnormalities so which side they are going to lean towards one side is either maybe the postural weakness the postural problem or maybe that side the cerebellum is going to be involved so we have to rule out so if the posture is normal so we can ask them to another walking pattern so is uh, the is going to tandem walking pattern is a uh, this tandem walking ask them to walk on the straight line if the posture is a normal if they are balanced good balance so they easily able to walk on the line who have some postural abnormality and balance problems so they unable to do these things unable to walk on the straight line so these are the some special tests we can rule out for the rule out the partial abnormalities so other than these things we can do so many other examinations other special tests the video motion analysis and video 3d analysis and also some sway measurement tools so these are equipments are so expensive so in case of like a postural analysis like a lab skill labs so is the for the research purpose we are going to identify the particular like a skill uh, the research labs are going to be useful the slight differentiation also we are going to find in the video motion analysis in the 3d video motion analysis not only for the uh, this uh, disabilities and also we are going to uh, check for the like a sports persons how their performance is going to be improved so while training they are going to check the which posture or which muscles having the overactive or which muscles are the less active we are going to found in the video motion analysis so what are the postural deviations so just now we discussed so these are the different types of the postural deviations ideal posture how is going to be bisect the plumb lines to the all the body parts so these are the altered the like, postures so according to the reasons so for example if you see here in the kyphotic posture or forward head so we have we can easily understand what the complications so what are the defects here so according to the defects we are going to give the treatment plan so according if you give the treatment plan according to the cost factor we can prevent the further complications so if, for example if any patient comes the uh, forward shoulder or forward head postures if you give exercise only for the back extensors so here only back extension we won't give the complete recovery or complete uh, uh, cure the problem we have to rule out where are the problem is because of the and also neck pro neck muscle tightness also there so shoulder muscle tightness also there and also because of the weakness of the scapular blade muscles are there so we can like this we can analyze properly so where the having the which muscles having the weakness and which muscles having the tightness so we can rule out and also we can give the treatment plan so that is we have the assessment the some deviations so what are the deviations we are going to found in the different uh, like a, in the joints so just now we already discussed again one more time we have to discuss so here in the ankle and foot so what type of problems they may chance to get is a hyperpronation and supination problems so if you see the uh, the foot problems so they are going to get the the foot problem okay i'll show you here so if we see here so different foot problems are we can see here that is the hyperpronation and also supination if we see here this is the the way of distribution the weight distribution is going to be altered here so if you see the the neutral hind foot here the hind foot means the back foot the back foot is the neutral one it's a supinated hind foot means supinated means it's tilted so it moves forward so it's going to be inverse so what happened so the weight distribution is going to be altered r is a pronated hind foot so pronation means it's tilted outside so if tilted i'd say the weight bearing is going to be uh, like it's changed so over pronated over tilted to outside so that's the reasons the may chance to get the abnormalities so these are the some foot abnormalities so if you know the what are the foot abnormalities if the patient comes we can easily diagnose and we can plan the treatment plan and also just now we discuss a genu recurvatum genu valgum genu varus so in the, these are the most common deformities in the knee joint so we are going to see what are the and also in the spine that uh, they may chance to get the lordosis is hyper like a curvature in the so it's most commonly seen in the sway back deformities and also may chance to get the kyphosis rounded back hump back and also flat back a dogger's hump 
scoliosis. So these are the most commonly deformities we can uh, see in the like who have the spinal abnormalities. So lordosis means excessive anterior curvature of the spine. So it is because of the so many reasons. Maybe in the further semesters you are going to learn about the all like all the conditions in the clearly. So this one is going to be hyperextension of the like a spine. So these are the so many reasons. So because of the postural the deformities or because of the weakness of the abdominal muscles or tightness of the lower back muscles and also maybe hip flexor contractures. So and spondylolisthesis, congenital problems or maybe because of the heel who are wearing the heel so may chance to get the lordosis. So these are the positive factors of the lordosis. And also we are going to see the some other problems in the lordosis the over sagging shoulders and also in the medial rotation of the leg and head is going to be the poor working forward with the abnormal pelvic rotations and also increasing with the lordosis. So these are the problems with the lordosis and also sway back deformities. So this is going to so increase the pelvic inclination is going to be increased in the sway back position. If you like uh, in all the if you uh, like a uh, uh, if you biomechanically analyze the any postures, you can clearly understand. Excessive, like a, here, curvature in the thoracic spine, so is called as the kyphosis. So these are kyphosis are going to be, so because of the round back, they may chance to get the hump or gibbous formations. So they are going to get the flat back and also the, these are the most commonly seen in the kyphosis conditions. So this is going to be long rounded curvature. So the pelvic inclination is going to be occurs in the thoracolumbar kyphosis. So they may chance to get the pelvic like a roundedness in the thoraco here in the thoracolumbar region. So is also in this condition they may chance to get the hip extensors, trunk flexor tightness. Hip flexors are going to be tight and also trunk flexors are going to be tight. So it's going to give the flexion and rounded posture is going to happening and weak hip flexors and also lumbar extensors. So because of the hip flexors are weakness, so we have uh, this one is going to be also make use the uh, they may chance to get the, the rounded like a sky like a rounded uh, hump. So and also localized sharp posterior angulation thoracic spine. So it's going to get the thoracic spine and also flat back, the decrease the pelvic inclinations. So this is most commonly seen being in the spinal the deformities such as the kyphosis, lordosis, and also scoliosis. And also the older patients with osteoporosis also may chance to get the kyphosis. Because of the osteoporosis is a bone like a joint disorders. So they may chance to get the fracture. So because of this one to compensate the pain. So they may chance to get the kyphosis hump. So another one important is scoliosis. So this will be the different type of scoliosis we can find. Structural scoliosis, non-structural scoliosis, idiopathic scoliosis. Non-structural scoliosis means because of the weakness of the muscles. They may chance to get the, the curve abnormal curvature. Structural means if any bone or joint abnormality, so may chance to get the scoliosis. Idiopathic scoliosis means so there is no positive factors in the scoliosis, so that is called as scoliosis, uh, idiopathic scoliosis. So many different causative factors are there for the structural scoliosis and also non-structural scoliosis. So functional is related to the uh, any limb lengthening discrepancy, any limb is altered the length, uh, any bony deformities, any similar like a muscle weakness or forward flexion or scoliosis curvatures. So these are the non-structural uh, scoliosis cost factor. So structural means because of the, any congenital abnormality, any bony deformities, any like a scoliotic curvature. So it may the it may change the progression of the curvature. So it's because of the structural. So these are the both two types of the scoliosis. So and also idiopathic scoliosis means there is no positive factors. So it's also called as the raises back spine. So this is also one of the cause to factor for the abnormalities. So here what we are going to measure. So just now we discussed we have to check the like a demographic data and also anthropometric measurement test. So what is the height and weight and also what is the length of the femur and also all these things we have to check. Height of the acromion and the scapula level and also pelvic level and then we have to check for the height of the anterior superior iliac spine. ASIS levels and also limb length. All these things we already discussed. So these are the special like assessment for um, plan for the to check the uh, postural abnormalities. The special tests are going to be lateral bending test. So if we bend forward, so we can find the abnormal curvature of the spine. Or maybe we can do the some flexibility test for the shoulder girdle. So who are having tightness, so they may chance to get the abnormality or less flexibility. Or corpse angle, we can do the X-ray. In the x-ray, we are going to do the 
like abnormal uh, like abnormal decay the curvature is start so we can find in the x ray also so and also other deformities in the knee we can see the knee recurvatum so this also one partial abnormality and genu varum bow legs and also genu valgum in the knock knees so these are also if any person comes we can easily identify if you have some knowledge about the abnormality of the knee and also genu valgum is so is going to the knock knees so and also genu varum is the bow legs and also is the knock knees are most commonly seen in the rickets and also osteomyelitis rheumatoid arthritis some also some muscle paralysis in case of osteoarthritis so these are the causative factors for the genu valgum and also measurement of the genu valgum so we have to measure in between the two malleoli so in between the right and left so how much distance is there according to that we can measure the genu valgum and also q angle also very important while assessing the this genu valgum and varus so the angle between the ass to the the tibial tubercle and also mid of the patella and middle of the patella to the tibial tubercle so this should be is the 14 degrees in the male and 15 degrees in 17 degrees in the females so if any alteration it may increasing the uh, abnormalities so genu varum is nothing but bow legs so these are so gives us so many reasons cause to factors and coming to the okay genu recurvatum so if you see the hyper extension of the leg so this hyper extension also is going because of the uh, weakness of the uh, hamstring and also uh, tightness of the calf muscle may chance to give the genu recurvatum so this is the uh, like a buckling movements they may chance to get while walking so this is may commonly seen in the cerebral palsy multiple sclerosis muscular dystrophy so who are having some neurological disorders so may chance to get the genu recurvatum so and also some foot abnormalities so just now we discuss about the pronation hyperpronation and supination also so if you identify where are having the problems so we can easily understand so according to the weight distributions so we can know the so which side the foot is deviated so then according to uh, this postural problems so if we give some corrections in the footwear modifications so we can prevent the this ankle problem ankle and foot problems so we can prevent the whole the the Uh, partial abnormalities in the hip as well as in the spinal nerve and also the supinated foot is going to be high arch foot and also so these type of problems may chance to get the because of the high arch curvatures that is a best cavus and best planus flat foot also may alter the posture so it may if we correct it properly we are going to correct the posture as in the spine and also hip so if we correct the because of the small problem in the, in the heel region because of the pronation so total body is going to be altered so that if we correct the small problem in the foot regions so we can correct the whole body postural problems so sometimes if the problem in the spine it also affect to the hip as well as going to affect to the foot also so that's why we are exactly having the problem so we have to rule out if we correct that things we are going to release the the postural abnormalities so we can give the the ideal posture if the ideal posture so we can prevent the further complications such as the pain or deformities or functional limitations so we are going to prevent so we can improve their functional status and also their health so that is about the postural analysis so because actually this is a very big vast topic so i i finished in the, within the one hour so if you go like a video motion analysis in the further studies maybe you can learn so many things in the next semesters hopefully okay that's all about today topic hope you understand so if you have any doubt you can send me a message i can clarify your doubts thank you very much see you in the next class in another topic